I can say it's insane that in Santa Clara County, a child rapist is home and the father is led in chain to the court and back and forth. I think that's insane. I think it shows something that on our society, this society is sick. Cain Velasquez's teammates speaking out in support of the UFC fighter who's accused of attempted murder. After police say he chased down a man accused of molesting his four-year-old son. Why Velasquez is stuck in jail right now while the accused child molester is out on bond. Plus... Our investigation has already um, revealed that it's apparent that the, the, the mother and the stepfather uh, were intimately involved in everything that was going on at the daycare center, and uh, we've got a lot of questions for them. I sit down with Velasquez's attorney, Mark Garagos, for much more on this twisted case, and you'll hear why they're not afraid to go to trial. That's all ahead for you, plus much more right here on Court TV Live. Good Wednesday morning to you. Great to see you with us here on Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. I'm sitting in for Ted Rollins this morning, who is on assignment in California covering the Scott Peterson case. And you'll be seeing him later today uh, throughout the broadcast here on Court TV. Right now, we want to turn our attention to a big case happening in California that we are also following. It involves former UFC heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez. He's accused of attempted murder. We're going to take a look at the case against him this hour. Um, we're also going to talk about what happened the last time he was in court and then look ahead uh, to the next hearing that's going to happen in the case. Uh, it's going to be a motions hearing. Uh, we know there are several motions that his team has been filing. Uh, his attorney is a very high-profile criminal defense attorney. You know him, Mark Garagos. I spoke with him the other day. We're going to share with you some of what he told me. And uh, trust me, he is not afraid to take this case to trial. Now, here's where we are with this one. So uh, the gist of it is Cain Velasquez is accused of the attempted murder of a guy who was first charged, not convicted, but charged, this guy right here, Harry Gularte, with molesting Velasquez's four-year-old son. Let's get you a little more about the background of this case. Joy Lim Nakrin has the story. This is the whole reason why I got into the sports to be the champion. I'm going to beat him. This is Cain Velasquez being interviewed before winning a contest that made him an ultimate fighting champion in 2010. The people need a champion. These days, Velasquez is fighting in a different arena. The retired UFC fighter faces attempted murder and other gun assault charges that could land him in prison for life. I'll ask the defense, are we entering a plea of not guilty at this time? Yes, Your Honor. The charges stem from a confrontation between Velasquez and Harry Goulart. It started at this intersection where prosecutors allege Velasquez fired into Goulart's truck, setting off an 11-mile high-speed chase through busy streets into San Jose. In trying to escape from Velasquez, the victim reached speeds of 100 miles an hour, according to investigators. The chase also brought the feuding pair close to this school, where police say Velasquez fired into the truck two more times, injuring the driver, Gallart's stepdad. I think that's insane. But fans and friends of Cain Velasquez contend he was acting as any father would to protect his son from an alleged predator. Listen, I, I, I have three kids myself. Anybody touch my kids? I'm going to kill them. I don't care about anything, the law, whatever. Velasquez's toddler was attending Patty's daycare, owned and operated by Goulart's mother. Velasquez went to police after he learned his four-year-old son had been allegedly abused by Harry Goulart over a two-year period. Prosecutors have charged Goulart with a felony count of lewd and lascivious act upon a child under the age of 14. Gallart was released without any notification to Velasquez and his wife, according to the defense. Very well-known criminal defense attorney and the man who happens to also be representing Cain Velasquez, attorney Mark Garagos, is on the show. Mark Cain's lawyer, Mark Garagos, appeared on closing arguments with Julie Grant to express his outrage over Gallart's release while his client remains locked up pending his trial. The fact that they're keeping 
Cain Sr. in jail when he needs to be home with his son at this trying time. Shame on, shame on everybody involved for doing that. This is uh, this is when a four-year-old son, most when he confides in his father. Can you imagine what is happening in that little boy's head that he told the truth, that he finally got up the nerve to tell his father this, that his father did the right thing and the authorities dropped the ball that every Everybody along the lines in the criminal justice system dropped the ball and now they've taken his father away from him. Prosecutors argue against releasing Velazquez because it would endanger Goulart and his family. But supporters of the UFC champ say Velazquez is not the threat. I want to see that, that child rapist in jail and I want to see his, his mother and his father that, that kept him in the house with kids in jail. That's what I want to see. I want to see the father home with his child, with a minor, that, and you need to help him to recover all that. That's what I want to see. All right, we want to bring in a very special guest now. Joining me, sports radio host and an expert on all things Ultimate Fighting Championships, Carlos Medina. He's from The Fan in Atlanta, joining us on the show this morning. A pleasure to see you, Carlos. Thank you for your time. But thank you. Do appreciate it. Oh, well, we appreciate you, and I really want to tap into your expertise on the UFC. So, uh, starting with Cain Velasquez, um, you know a lot about him. He's not necessarily a household name. Uh, if if you're into uh, watching all things UFC, uh, you know him. You probably love him. I, I, I understand he, he's been a real fan favorite for a long, long time. Um, give our audience a little bit of an idea of, of what he's meant to the UFC over the years, please. Well, understand this. This is a man who is a two-time heavyweight champion. Uh, he was a guy that was known uh, well before even he was in the UFC as being one of the finest wrestling champions in all of NCAA history. This is a man who basically worked himself into uh, getting a title shot years ago, won the title, got hurt, was able to come back. He was a really incredible story and then win the title again after losing it. And so when you talk about the greatest heavyweights in UFC history, you've got to talk about Kane as being one of those guys uh, that, that you basically write down and say that's the kind of uh, level of popularity that he has within the sport. Wow. So his background was in wrestling first, you said? Yes, that's correct. Wow. So I... I mean, this this is a really, really talented athlete, is he not? Yeah, when you talk about the UFC, there might be as many as 675, 700 uh, total wrestlers on their roster, male and female. So to become a celebrity within the UFC, you have to do some pretty big things. And Cain Velasquez became one of the biggest names in all the sport. And so when you talk about this case, that's why it resonates with not just so many UFC fans, but sports fans and ultimately a lot of parents out there as well. Right, right, Carlos. Wanted to talk to you about that. Um, and we know that Cain Velasquez is certainly aware of all of the support he's getting from the outside. Lots of his you know, former teammates, friends, fans um, are really pushing uh, for him to be freed from jail right now pending uh, this case. Um, what can you tell us about the fans, the UFC fans and the loyalty and the devotion they have to the guys who they think of as, you know, their guys, uh, no matter uh, what they're doing, if they're in uh, retirement as, you know, as he is, uh, they still love them. Yeah, UFC fans and, and a lot of the fighters, uh, they're almost looked at as like their individual brands. Mm -hmm. And so you have people that have brand loyalty to individual fighters. And so, but it's also a community. There's a reason why so many of these fighters have respect for one another because they train against each other. They have to agree to fight one another. It's not just like these are exactly just arranged fights. You fight this guy. You have to agree to a lot of these fights. And so a lot of guys look at it as, if I won and I beat this guy, it's because he gave me an opportunity to. I owe him something. And so that's where that fight community really stays strong behind Cain Velasquez. It's why the fandom, uh, when you talk about a sport that even in the height of the pandemic, they found a way to fight over on Fight Island going across the world. They realized we were able to provide a uh, an entertainment for these fans. And so that's why the fandom, when it comes to supporting Cain Velasquez in this case, is so strong for him. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. And, and tell me, and you're really in touch, uh, Carlos, with all of the conversations uh, around everything going on in the UFC. 
for many of our viewers, you know, who love true crime, they're true crime aficionados, and this just happens to be a case that we're closely following at Court TV. When this happened back in, in February, the incident that is the subject of this case, it's going to be uh, heading to trial. You know, everybody kind of was doing the dig at who is Cain Velasquez, you know, what's he all about? Has the conversation ever tapered off in your world? Like, because for us, it'll kind of kick back up whenever there's a new date where he's heading to court or something's happening in court or there's a motion filed. Uh, right now, we're waiting on another motion filed by the Garagos team to try to get him out on a bond while he awaits trial. And so are you still hearing an ongoing buzz uh, in your world and all the radio work you do? Tell me, please. A lot of it does come down to it's always the next motion and mm -hmm. it's always the date in, in September when they're going to decide is this case going to go to trial when everything happened in February uh, initially with the story of February 24th and uh, the molestation case and how that quickly turned into February 28th and now we're talking about uh, you know, Cain Velasquez being involved in and initially it was, it was reported as an auto incident then it turned into wait it was an attempted murder uh, and a shooting uh, then everything kind of went cold for a while and I think the outrage has been knowing that the person that is accused of this crime that he went after uh, while albeit on on basically being monitored at home that person is free Cain Velasquez is not and so I think that's one of the underlying things within the fandom they realize this man is no longer a threat according to a lot of the people out there including his representatives let's get him home to his family and then if he's going to see, uh, if he's going to have to deal with with uh, with his day in court then let him, let him have his day in court right exactly Carlos you know and when you think about his child who's arguably the biggest victim in all this, according to you know, the state of California, his child who uh, was allegedly molested by this Harry Goularte, who Velasquez is accused of trying to kill. You know, you would think the child needs to be with his dad at a time because this is a time of crisis for a young child and to make sure he's getting the support he needs, you know, emotionally, maybe even therapeutically, you know, who knows? And if dad's not with him, you would think that could be a problem. Um, tell me, you know, when I chatted with, I chatted with Mark Garagos the other night on our evening program, and of course I asked him if, if he, Cain Velasquez would be testifying. I mean, Mark is not afraid to go to trial, not afraid to pick a jury <laughs> on this, um, very confident in the jurors in that particular county in California. And um, of course, you know, he, he wasn't going to commit to what Cain Velasquez would do or not do, but he said something to the effect, I'm paraphrasing here, that Kane wants his story out there. He, so that kind of indicated to me like, okay, he just might testify. Um, I'm sure you've heard him or you've heard him spoke many times over the years. Um, how do you think he might come off to a jury, Carlos, if he were to get up there and and talk about what happened from his point of view? Well, I will tell you, I'm a, I'm not an attorney, but I have uh, thought about this quite a bit since this case came out. Uh, as a parent, I have two little ones. I have an 11 year old and a soon to be eight year old, both daughters, and I think about what would I do if this situation happened? And and I can't blame Cain Velasquez. And I have to imagine that there are gonna be a lot of people on that jury. If Mark Garagos is able to get who he wants, if it does go to trial, gonna look for parents. And I, I think as parents, we're gonna look at this situation and say, in a moment of, of frustration, of being uh, crazy about the legal system, maybe I would have done something like this. And so we, we've seen this before. There is some legal precedent for some parents who've taken uh, cases into their own hands and, and taken it out of the legal system, and some have been punished, some have not been. Uh, it'll just be very interesting to see if they choose to go to trial telling his story if it'll resonate with that jury. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're exactly right, uh, Carlos. You're exactly right. You're thinking like a lawyer. Absolutely. I know you said <laughs> you're not one, but um, you do a great job. Well, well, one, one year of business law. That's all I have. Oh, so nice. I'm a different, different animal. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's fantastic. Well, you have been such a great guest. Uh, we're just so delighted to have you on the show today. Um, thank you so much, Carlos Medina. You can listen to him on The Fan in Atlanta. And we want all of you to tweet us. Let us know what you think about this trial at Court TV is our Twitter handle. Give us your comments, any questions you have.